right now, your, your enthusiasm is contagious. You know, it's like a can-do attitude. You know, feel like it can do anything if you just, you know, get focused, have a purpose, et cetera. But along the way, did you have doubts or were there things that like were, um, you know, dislocating to the progress you were making? Well, first of all, I mean, business, building a business is hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when you tell an 11 year story in the course of 90 seconds, it all sounds easy. Yeah. Uh, at the time, there's personnel issues. I think the hardest problems were always people problems. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would have much preferred to have to solve all the technical problems. The people problems always created the most stress for me because they, they had the biggest impact. Who exactly was sitting in which seat on the bus and where exactly they were sitting in the seat on the bus had such a profound impact on the velocity of the bus mm -hmm. that any time there was misalignment or there was friction or something like that, that was always by far my, my biggest stressor. So I think as it relates to that, those were the things kind of that I always wanted to get on the other side of to, to keep pushing the business forward. So let's go back to 11 years ago. What would you today tell yourself 11 years ago, your entrepreneurial self from 11 years ago, say, hey, let me give you a little advice here, son. What would, what would you say? <laughs> <laughs> I would probably, if I could only say a couple things, I would have told, told the younger version of myself to read the books of L. Reese, mm -hmm. uh, R-I-E-S uh, mm -hmm. is the spelling of the last name. Um, had I read L. Reese's book sooner, mm -hmm. it would have saved me a lot of time and accelerated the business. He, he's just an incredible writer. Mm -hmm. I would have read Jim Collins' book, Good to Great, sooner. Mm -hmm. And um, I would have read The Art of the Start 2.0 by Guy Kawasaki sooner. Mm -hmm. So honestly, if I could go back, I would probably do nothing but re bring myself a reading list yeah. <laughs> of the things that had been most pivotal to the decisions I made as a business person. And so I could have made those decisions in a more informed way and made them sooner in the process. Other than that, I don't know that I would have changed much. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we built a great business. There were some things we didn't control. I graduated in 2003. The business started in 2003. Right. There was no way to accelerate that. Right. That's when I had the idea. So everything else that could have accelerated or resulted in us building faster would be people and books and resources we came across in the process that gave us clarity in our direction. How do you approach deal making? So you started the business, then you brought in two people that you now refer to as co-founders, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, somewhat you know early in the business development. How do you pick them? And it sounds like they took the whole ride with you. Is that correct? Yeah. So, so that's unusual. I mean, a lot of times, uh, you know, there's the you know, partnerships break up. There's friction. There's issues. So how how did you approach these this deal making? Give up equity and do all the things you did. Sure. So some of it was so there was some friction in there. I mean, for example, one of the first things after they were on board is, was a long, heated debate about how much equity each person ought to have, <laughs> how much of the business, right? And, and as the person starting with 100% myself, knowing that how much I gave away I could never get back, right. you tend to want to be cautious with those things. But also, they were making an incredible invest, you know, investment in the business and it would not be what it is. So some of that required some great outside counsel. Um, but I think as far as, I guess as far as deal making, um, I look for great people with shared values. Mm -hmm. So underpinning, even when we had some very heated conversations, underpinning that was a shared set of values. All three of us were Christians. All three of us deeply cared about each other and each other's families. And all of us wanted what was the ultimate fair and right mm -hmm. on the other end of things. Mm -hmm. And so that, that led to decisions ultimately that settled in a very fair and equitable way for the three of us. But also we ended up putting a, a huge amount of stock um, into an equity pool for the employees. Mm -hmm. So at the time of the sale of the company, it was tens of millions of dollars went into the pockets of employees other than me and the co-founders because we decided to approach the employees the way we had with each other, which was to say, if we want you to act like an owner, mm -hmm. you've got to be an owner. Right. And to, to be an owner, we've got to give you equity to make you an owner. And was that in the form of options or how did you get yeah. it? Yeah, so it was uh, stock units. Yeah. And um, at, the, at the sale of the company, once it was clear that, that it was uh, selling, we announced the deal uh, when the majority of stock in the company was going to sell. And one of the things I did with employees is I printed out Dave Ramsey's financial peace, mm -hmm. seven steps to financial peace for every employee. Mm -hmm. And Dave Ramsey's done a lot of stuff on financial peace and mm -hmm. fi financial freedom and all of that. And, and every employee got a copy of this. Mm -hmm. And I said, look, some of you are going to find a way to make yourself worse off with all this money. <laughs> but my hope and prayer is that most of you follow the seven steps on this sheet, which is set aside some emergency cash, mm -hmm. pay off your credit card debt, pay right. off 
any car loans you have, pay mm -hmm. off your house if you can. And a whole lot of employees did exactly that. Mm -hmm. They went through and they set aside some emergency cash. And a lot of employees paid off cars, paid off uh, student loan debts, paid off even houses mm -hmm. due to the payout they got from the company. So as it relates to money, that was, I think, one of the, uh, one of the things I'm most proud of is taking hundreds of employees mm -hmm. and all at one time being able to leapfrog them way along the line of reaching you know, financial peace and financial freedom and encouraging them to make wise decisions with this large infusion of money they were each getting. And how much of your company did you allocate for the employees? Uh, more than one third of the company oh, wow. was two employees other than me. Wow. So it was at the, at the time of, of the deal, more than a third of the money was getting to, distributed, which ended up being a, a, a very large amount of, of money. And also the um, uh, subsequent owners of Bombgar Corporation have been very generous with stock options and grants and co-invest, mm -hmm. where they've uh, generally offered the employee to invest alongside the investor at exactly the same terms, oh, wow. which is pretty incredible yes. because any upside the investors get, the employees are right there with them. So I've, uh, I've been pleased that even after that initial transaction, um, the approach toward employees and equity and co-investing and all that has, uh, has kept everyone very aligned. And I think that's a theme, right? I mean, no matter uh, you know, what business you might have and what the scale of it is, whether you know, maybe your doctor's office, uh, you know, a, you know, a small accounting firm, whatever it might be, there's employees that work there and if you can have the mentality saying that, geez, you know, we've got multiple ways to compensate and incentivize, and one of them is to give them some upside, you know, yes. give them a piece of this company so they show up with ownership mentality every day. Sure, and, and every, every business that I would ever get involved in, I would try to find a way to structure some sort of equity component mm -hmm. or incentive compensation that mm -hmm. says the people who do a good job are going to make more. Mm -hmm. What I did not ever want to be in a situation where I was walking out of the building celebrating because something good had happened to me, but I was leaving behind the people that really made it happen for me. Mm -hmm. So what I told the employees, and, and actually the way the, the stock in the company was structured, the, the share price was the same for every single share of, of, of stock. Mm -hmm. So on the day we announced that... Uh, that TA Associates was acquiring uh, a majority stake in the company, I actually had a PowerPoint presentation where I put the stock price up for all employees. Mm -hmm. And I said, the reason I can show you this stock price mm -hmm. is because this is how much I'm getting for my shares, mm -hmm. and this is how much you're getting for your shares. Right. So however many you have, now different employees, different people have different amounts of stock, but whatever it is, you can multiply it by the number on this deck, on this PowerPoint presentation slide, and that's exactly how much money you're walking away with. There's no special preferences here. Mm -hmm. There's nobody that's at the front of the line. Mm -hmm. There's nobody that's getting a special kicker mm -hmm. uh, or accelerator. All of us are getting paid exactly that number times however many share units you have. And did every employee from the receptionist, all, so everybody had something? Everybody had something. Uh, everybody had something worth at least tens of thousands of dollars for them personally up to much more than that. Wow. So uh, it was interesting. I mean, we even had some employees that had started a week, two weeks before <laughs> the deal, and they were given a stock grant mm -hmm. because we were telling them, look, it doesn't matter how long you've worked here, even if you were here 48 hours, <laughs> as long as you started and you contributed to this business at a, you know at least one minute mm -hmm. <laughs> before this transaction happened, you're gonna have stock in this because mm -hmm. you contributed into it, and we're not gonna be sitting in this room with some of us celebrating and some of us missing out. Mm -hmm. We're all gonna be celebrating. Now, again, the amounts may be different, but everybody here is going to be celebrating it. Everybody's going to have a significant financial upside. So this sounds like it goes to when you're, when you're looking at money through certain lenses, uh, that people who have a scarcity orientation toward money would feel like they can't do that. Uh, I, have to, I couldn't give new employees you know, grants for, for equity. Uh, but it seems like your whole view is abundance, that there's an unlimited you know, supply that can be created based on our efforts and we can share it. It is, and, and, and my experience is those that hold things tightly get less. Yeah. <laughs> and, and my own experience was even with the employees, even giving away large amounts of stock, because initially all the stock had to fund, all of it had to come out of my own shareholdings. Mm -hmm. um, the more, it felt like, and continued all the way as long as I was a shareholder at Bombgar, that the more, the more I gave away, the more I kept became worth. <laughs> so ultimately, what I retained, even after giving away far more, and even, even our investors when they came in, you know, I asked them periodically, you know, what, what was most surprising? And they said, 
we, we've never seen we've never seen a founder of a company give away as much stock as you <laughs> as you've given away. Right. Um, but the truth is, what I still retained ended up being worth far more than I ever thought it would be. Right. Even if I had tried to hold on to the whole pie for myself, right. I ended up getting more than double what I would have gotten had had from the very beginning. I really tried to hold the pie to myself. Yeah. And and the benefit is not only that I got more than double myself, it's that all these other people got to eat pie too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is just way more fun. I mean, who doesn't want to make hundreds of employees, you know, wealthy in various degrees from from high to low? Uh, it's just. That's just it's 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 fun and incredible, and it's and it's, again it's better for everyone. It's not a trade off of if I want to get rich I have to hold, but if I want them to be rich I have to give. Mm -hmm. In this case, and I think in business in general, the more you give, the wealthier you get, yeah. because everybody who's receiving wants to make their own shareholdings worth something, mm -hmm. and in doing so, they make your own shareholdings worth much more than it would otherwise be.